World Thinking Day 2021 in the Falkland Islands, the Girl Guides Brownies and Rainbows met at the Stone Corral near Stanley, where they carried out a series of activities, examining local plants and flowers, geocaching, physical education and playing games. While we were all together, we took the opportunity to ask the girls what they wanted to be when they were older. I would like to be a detective police officer. Um, be a journalist. I would like to be a veterinarian. Um, be in the army. I would like to be a rock star, an artist, a scientist and a ninja. What they found exciting in the world? Um, mostly, um, eating cake. <laughs> What they thought about gender equality? No, I think girls can do anything that boys can do and boys can do anything that girls can do. Like ladies can be doctors, men can be nurses. Everyone being equal and not biased. Who are their heroes? Um, Amelia Earhart. Anna Watson. Uh, Rosa Parks. Florence Nightingale. The soldiers. Because they fighted in the war. My mummy and daddy is my heroes and also the brownies leaders. Yeah, my daddy is a hero because he can lift a car up with his pinky. I've seen him do that. Is there anything that they think that women cannot do? Can, I don't really think I can do cartwheels, a uh, triple cartwheel though. I mean double. We then took the girls with the most directed excitement to meet the professionals, giving them the opportunity to talk to adults about their work and to ask them some questions. Yeah, I did have, I mean, I guess I had heroes that were ladies, but a bit later on. Um, and they were friends of mine, or, you know, people that I worked with, uh, that basically just did whatever they wanted to do and what they loved. So they weren't, let's say, dictated by society what they should do and so they just followed their dreams and went on with it and they were always happy about what they were doing and happy to enjoy life and so those were always my heroes um yeah and inspirations really when i was very young <laughs> and starting work um phil rendell was the director of agriculture and i've always very much looked up to her and followed her example because she's very sensible and hard working um and so locally that would be one of the main people that i i would follow who are your heroes? You know Vicky, who you go to Girl Guides with? Mm -hmm. Vicky's a big hero. Why is Vicky your hero? Vicky's my hero because she was the first person I met at the fire station. She was the first female firefighter here and she became my boss. She was my leader. So it made me believe that I could do it. Squad! Squad! Who are your heroes? It's going to sound really cheesy. My, one of them is my babushka, so my grandmother, um, and then definitely my friends. Especially the people I worked like during my masters and through like education, they've done so many incredible things that they want you to do better, and they make you want to do more things with your life. Who are your heroes? When I was growing up, most of my heroes were actually sports persons. Um, absolutely love football and athletics. Um, so people like Sally Gamble, who was a British athlete, she was one of my heroes. Who are your heroes? I think at the moment it would have to be someone like Jacinda Ardern, who's the Prime Minister of New Zealand, who is doing such an awesome job and she is such a, an amazing role model for young women. Um, what does gender equality mean to you? So I suppose on a personal level or on a professional level, um, I suppose it just means being treated like the same as a male journalist next to me. That's, it's that simple. I don't want to be treated any different to... Uh, when I first came to work at Penguin News, I worked alongside a very esteemed journalist called John Fowler. And um, I did. When, after a few years, I hoped that I would not be treated any differently than he was treated. I hoped that I'd be treated with respect. I hoped that people wouldn't treat me with kid gloves just because I was a girl. You know, I hoped that um, as time went on and I worked with other men, that I would be treated 
exactly the same way that they would be treated. And as time went on, I think that is the case in the Falklands. Um, I've been along to meetings and um, I have annoyed chief executives and I have annoyed mm. members of the Legislative Assembly and they've shouted at me and <laughs> barked at me and, and I haven't minded that at all. I thought, that's great, they're not treating me nicely because I'm a girl. Mm. They've yelled at me and they've been very annoyed with me and <laughs> been really quite nasty. Mm. I haven't cried <laughs> and I've just thought that's good, you know, they've, that's, I, I'll take the rough with the smooth because they're, as long as they treat me seriously as well when I'm interviewing them, um, that's fine, that's how I want to be treated. Gender equality. Equality. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. Could you imagine if you were in school yeah. and a boy was getting all the house points and you weren't just because yeah. you were a girl? Yeah. That wouldn't be nice, would it? Mm -mm. No. It's a lot. I'd be angry. I would too. I don't look at things from a gender point of view. I just look at people. Um, to me, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, who you are. To me, that doesn't matter. Everybody should be treated equally. Growing up, because I grew up in New Zealand, um, there was a multitude of different cultures and different people, so it didn't, to me, that's what I grew up with, and so I didn't actually think anything of different people. It, yeah, that's, that's a hard question to ask. Actually, this generation, the younger generation, hopefully, they don't see distinctions and hopefully they just carry on and just accept people as people and that's, that's how it should be. How could a young person promote a more inclusive society? We, we have to get men and women talking about their roles at home and perhaps talking about how they can share share the work at home a bit more but I don't know how you do that perhaps that's something that people need to be talking about at school maybe there's a lesson at school where you can fit those discussions in yeah. and where people start talking about it really early I don't know you used to have PSHG or something at school years ago we still got that yeah still, or maybe that's the one where people start talking about things like this you know when, when you're older and you know who should be doing this share and this share and people start putting their hands up and, and if the boys start saying oh well that's what the women do you should be saying, well, why should they be doing that? You should be sharing this. Maybe that's discussions that should be had early on. You know, it, things like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's all sorts of things that should be discussed early on. Um, and, and debate and, and politics, they should be talked about at school as well. I mean, this, this is when things like politics should be, should be brought in and discussed. We're never going to move on as a society and have more women in politics if things like that are not talked about early. And certainly for International Women's Day, something we noticed last year at the International Women's Conference was that for some reason, fewer women were putting themselves forward to be politicians than men here. Yeah. And a lot of the voting, you know, women would get elected here, kind of, but fewer women were putting themselves forward for election. So we were trying to figure out why that's happening um, when it's great to have a government that represents all the people. And so having more women on there kind of makes, hopefully, makes it a more attractive. Thing in the future to do. How do we tackle sexism? I think a lot of it's through education and especially in secondary school and when you're younger. Um, quite a lot of it's definitely through like relationships education and just boys and men understanding that even if they don't mean to be intimidating, it just comes almost naturally um, to like younger females out and about. But also in terms of wider sexism, I think it's a lot of boring policy making and just like educating the government and making sure there aren't those loopholes in the system that make it harder for females to get to the same place as males. What inspires you? Oh, what inspires me? People achieving things inspires me. So I feel inspired by people who work hard and achieve things and at the same time manage to be kind and nice to other people. Because it's I think fun. It's, I think it's the fact of proving people wrong. Yeah. Thinking that I couldn't do it and I wanted to prove them wrong. So like some of your friends 
Yeah, what like people in school thought that I couldn't do it. And I, and I wanted to prove them wrong and say, hey, I did do it. Are there lots of opportunities for women in medicine? There are. Yeah, absolutely. In veterinary medicine, more and more, for whatever reason, I don't know why, um, most of the, the graduates these days are women. Um, and I think, you know, it's just because as time has gone by, women are more able to go to vet school. They're not expected to just stay home and raise a family or anything yeah. like that. And actually more and more, sometimes you work in practices which are just really female dominated, which is great. I never thought of flying because I think, you know, when you're a kid, especially when you're a girl, I guess, um, airplanes, it seems like it's an unreachable thing, right? It's yeah. a bit like going to the moon, right? And I guess that's how I looked at it, like I never had any um, contact with it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I was on a boat, so I'd never been in an aircraft before. But then I went to New Zealand for college, and um, the school I went to, you could actually like, do some flights through the school. And I was like, oh, that'd be quite cool. So I just did a couple and then basically just became addicted. <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's the way to be. I mean, I don't think there should be a difference. We're all with people, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're tall or, sh or short. I mean, I'm the shortest one and I can still see out the window, so that's all right. <laughs> um, no, I don't think. I think it's all about what you think. So if you think you can do it, then you can do it. It just takes motivation and sometimes sometimes you might get it wrong the first time or not manage but if you keep trying you'll eventually get it. That's what I think. Don't listen to people who tell you you can't do it. <laughs> so I think International Women's Day is about celebrating women the world over in, um, in all fields from the stay-at-home mum uh, to women in industry, to women in business, politics, in, in absolutely every field and encouraging girls and, uh, and boys also actually to understand the importance of, of equality for society as a whole. I think everybody benefits when there's equality. Um, perhaps predictably, actually, my, my hero is my mum. Um, she was a, a very strong lady who lived quite a difficult life and uh, she got through it with good humour and generosity and kindness and uh, yeah, she, is, she instilled a lot of values in me and gave me opportunities that she never had so she was definitely